All right, so I'm Derek. Justin. And this is our second episode of Nerd Talk. Uh, second. Today we and are uh, on location in Asgard. We are in Asgard today um, in celebration of the recent release of Thor, The Dark World. Do we want to start off that topic or should we come to it later? We can start, might as well. Okay, we might, might as well just start with it. Oh, all we, right. we saw Thor 2 today. So we just got done seeing Thor. And it was awesome. Two. And it was awesome. It was better than the first it one. It was better than the first one. A lot more action, uh, less earth. Oh, and um, spoilers. I'll just go ahead and say that just in case. Yeah, spoilers. There will be spoilers. Because I'm pretty be sure I want to like run the end of the movie. And yeah, like... For like there's a lot of awesome things about it, like the, the cameo from a previous Avenger, which was hilarious. Yeah, Captain America's in it. Yeah, I was, not... was going to leave it free. I was just going to... I wasn't even going to specify. That's, what, that's one of the funniest parts of the whole movie. It is. Uh, due to Loki, Loki's pretty awesome in the whole yeah. movie. Tom Hiddleston, man. Loki, he's, Loki's he's, actually the best part of the, the movie. Shit. Yeah, he's the best part of the movie. For sure. Um, there's death. There's, there's death. Some amazing scenes from some characters we didn't, can, didn't get to see them like really use their full potential in the first movie, like Idris yeah. Elba. That's true. He had a, he had a few badass moments. One in particular. He, he's the one who plays. Uh, he's Hemdall. He's the yeah uh, that guy the the Bifrost Bi bridge Bifrost, keeper. Bri yeah that guy he, who sees everything. Yes, everything. <laughs> uh, uh, we get to see some sweet action from him. Sweet action. And. There's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty much amazing. They, they, they do well connecting it to the past movies, just mentioning things like what happened in New York and Thor being around. Stellan Skarsgård comes back. Stellan Skarsgård. Skarsgård. He walks around na naked or in his yeah. underwear most of the movie. Yes. But <laughs> yes. It's really funny. It's good comic relief. Him and Cat <laughs> Dennings have good comic relief. Yeah, they're, they're awesome together wow. in this one. That would be my, like, not that I, I mean, it's not even that big a deal. My biggest complaint would be the movie would be the weird comedic breaks near the end. It was like, oh, the big battle's going on, but hold on, let's stop and make oh, a joke. Yeah, let's hold on and be funny. Yeah, and I guess and it's, it's kind of matches. The, ba the, the, battle's, the battle's sweet, yeah. and the funny parts take you out of it is a little bit, but but the battle itself is kind of just a clusterfuck. It is a huge clusterfuck, and because of portals and but But it's fun, and... and like Justin, like Justin said, the, there's the little comic bit, bits in it that take you out, but the whole movie has little comic bits all throughout yeah. it that they're really enjoyable and make you laugh. And really, all the the Marvel movies have been that way because the Avengers had a lot of funny moments. Iron Man obviously had a lot of funny moments because uh, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., you know, funny. And random character that I didn't know was going to be in this one, Chris O'Dowd. Yeah. No, no real importance. Just kind of. No, yeah, he's, he doesn't matter to the movie at all. But it was awesome because I but, love Chris O'Dowd. And it's hard to take him seriously. I know. I mean, hence, I mean, I think if I ever saw him in a role where it was meant to be serious, it would just be weird. Yeah, I and mean, if I ever see him in real life, I'm just going to ask him to, you know, just do an IT crowd quote. Or just laugh, because or just I laugh. just assume he's going to be funny, <laughs> even if he's doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, I laughed at him the first, when he popped up on screen, and I was just like, ha <laughs> Yeah. He didn't yeah. say anything yet. So, you said the best part of the movie was Loki, but I, I think the best part was the mid-credit scene. Oh, yeah. The mid-credit scene, setting up for Guardians of the Galaxy and beyond. We got to see an awesome Marvel villain, the Collector. Yes, played by the awesome Benicio del Toro, really hamming it up. He was. <laughs> it was hamming it up. It was like just a motherfucker. It was, it was, it, it was, it was just. He just seemed so happy to be there. Yeah, definitely James Gunn directed. <laughs> definitely a James Gunn inspiration. And in uh, it was. The, he looked exactly like the Collector yeah, does in did. the comics. No, and yeah, he, he had the he crazy hair. Awesome. And just, he's just smiling. He was, yeah, and then you know he he mentioned or they mentioned that it's an Infinity Stone. Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, stone, yeah. They, yeah. They say, oh, it's not better not keep two of the Infinity Stones in the same place. And and at, right as soon as they leave, you know he says what he says himself. Uh, my collection. Yeah, and one down, five to go. Obviously alluding to the Infinity Gauntlet. And Avengers the, three. The epicness that will prob crossed. it'll probably be in Avengers three because we already know Ultron is the villain in the second one. Yeah. And Thanos is a huge part of Infinity Gauntlet, and he was in the end credits of the first Avengers. Right. They're obviously building to it's that. kind of pissed he wasn't going to be in the second one, but... Yeah, but, the, again, the, you know, it's... But he's going to be in Guardians of the building. Galaxy. And he's supposed to be around for Guardians of the Galaxy, which is... I'm getting so much more excited about just that, I am that, too. Little, that little quick thing and the, the footage that I saw from Comic-Con. Bradley right? Cooper's Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, and Vin Diesel's Groot. <laughs> like, it has an all-star cast. And, and Chris just, Pratt is yeah, going to blow up. I was going to say, Chris Pratt, this is going to be... The what makes Chris Pratt? Yeah, he, uh, which we we've been fans of him for a while because of Parks and Recreation and Ben mm -hmm. Parks and I mean he was great in Zero Dark Thirty, and I'm just yeah. I'm excited to see him start doing more and you know he's he's hilarious but yeah. just to see him start doing like serious roles he might be in the new Jurassic, Jurassic World yeah, yeah. that'll be crazy that's that's 
That's just crazy that he managed to like steal that from Josh Brolin. I know, I know. Why would I mean Josh Brolin? Turn, what would he think when he sees like, oh man, I turned that down, and now the goofy guy from Parks and Recreation is taking it over? Which of <laughs> course by then Guardians will have been out, and nobody will think of him that way again. But still, it's Josh Brolin, and we don't. He's know always going to be yeah. Andy from Parks He'll and Recreation. Always Rec. be Andy. I just, anyways, yeah. But uh, just to throw it out there. Jamie Alexander so hot. She should be Wonder Woman, super hot. I wish there was a little bit more of her. There was, I think there was more of her in this one than the last one, but I still wish there was more, even more yeah. of her because, yeah. I, I really hope she will be Wonder Woman, but. Yeah, it's not looking like it will be. I, I just keep getting less excited about everything DC's doing. Well. I mean, all the new talks about the Batman and Superman are like kind of bringing my hopes down. I don't know, like, there are things, there's bits of it that excite me and bits of it that don't. Uh, I think that they're gonna pile up the Justice League thing in Batman and Superman. I would just prefer a Batman versus Superman movie. Right. I mean, it, honestly, I would much prefer just a sequel to Man of Steel, because Man of Steel was fun, and the way it ended, they got the origin out of the way, he just got a job, uh, uh, spoiler, Derek. That's cool. He just got a job at the Daily Planet, he just, they just alluded that he's gonna be, you know, he's got the glasses and everything. The Clark sequel Kent. would be, yeah, he becomes the, the Clark Kent we all know and love. And so it was going to, the sequel, I was so excited when I saw that because I was like, well, he was in the Day of the Planet. We didn't see Jimmy Olsen or anything, but now I know in the sequel he could be around. And But now that they have put Batman in there, which is cool, it is awesome because we've never seen Batman and Superman in a movie together before. No. And ben Affleck is going to be an awesome Batman like we mentioned last time. But now there's like, oh, we're going to have Wonder Woman in there and we're going to have Flash. Flash in there and we might have Nightwing in there. Mm -hmm. Um, which a couple, one of the Nightwing rumor casting is Ezra Miller, which would be cool. Oh, really? Yeah, he's one of the yeah. rumored uh, people, which could be cool. He's he's really, I, he's awesome. If you don't know who that is, if you've seen Perks of Being a Wallflower, he's the gay dude yeah. in that. Or we need to talk about Kevin, he's the creepy yeah. guy in that. <laughs> he's the creepy kid when you talk about uh, Kevin. But, but yeah, they're just, you know, and now one of the things they're saying, or is the rumor, is that, uh... They want the like they want the flash in there and they want Wonder Woman, but they're not going to be their. This is going to be their alter egos and and what they're going to do is see how the new TV Flash does and how he's received by audiences. And if they don't receive him very well, then they'll recast him for the movie. But if fans do like the TV Flash, then TV Flash will be in the Justice League movie, which I think which means Green Arrow from CW might be would, in the Justice yeah, League. Yeah, which and it would be smart because. You don't have to worry about new movies to build up these characters that are in the TV show. That'd be a really cool thing, actually, to have it those would. TV shows going. And have the TV um, shows tie in, because that would be going along what, with what Marvel's doing. Exactly. I think the biggest downer for it, for me anyways, is that now we're going to have this unknown kid playing The Flash. And even though that's all fine and dandy, they've had unknown people play, play superheroes, superheroes before. You know? I, actually th like, I, actually, I actually thought Brandon Routh was a decent Superman and Superman Returns, but that was just because he was very Christopher Reeve-ish. Yeah, I, mean, I thought he um, was a good Superman. I mean, the movie sucked, but yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, the movie was long and boring. And, and that but, destroyed him. Yeah, and you know, well, Wolver uh, uh, Hugh Jackman was not was an unknown when he did Wolverine. I mean, um, he was there. You know, he'd done stuff before. Not He never had a movie, like not a movie movie. He'd done Broadway and stuff, yeah. but not a movie movie, you know. And uh, he was an amazing Wolverine. And he ended up doing awesome, and look at it now, but... Uh, but but Fassbender I, had barely done anything before he became Magneto. That's true. Um, well, I mean, he had done. I mean, he was a in three hundred and then Glorious Bastards. But I but I understand yeah. the point. Uh, you know, I just there was a part of me that wanted someone like Chris Pine or or, or Chris uh, Pine would be an awesome or Flash or Ryan Gosling maybe uh, just as Flash, like you know. But we'll see how this guy does. It could be cool. Also, they're talking about the the use of Lex Luthor, which yeah. uh, the rumor is that he's gonna. I don't know, use scientists or something like that to try to develop the Kryptonian, to redevelop Kryptonian, Kryptonian, Kryptonian armor <laughs> that was used by Zod and then in the first movie, which would all, obviously, that's you, very you, you, you imagine that big green, the big green know, robot. Yeah, and so that's kind of cool. That could be a neat final act of Superman where he's battling. I would love Superman. to see Luthor the big green robot. Yeah. The, I still hope there's another big villain or some other villain that causes the two of Batman and Superman to have to team up because if it's just Lex Luthor in the suit... It'd be cool if it was a Batman but, villain who brought yeah. him to, like, Metropolis. Yeah, you know, you know I, I, I want, I've I, been curious who they're going to do because I think it'd be too soon to do the Joker. Like, I realize they're rebooting it all, but it's it's, it's too, too soon. soon. He was too awesome. That's living up too fast after. and um, You know, but I don't really know who else could be good. I mean, Bane would be a neat villain for that, for Superman, but obviously that's also a bit... It's also yeah. too soon. He was the last one. Um, unless I do little random ones or something, but, uh, Like Black Mask or something? Yeah, Black Mask or Hush could be neat. Yeah. Um, 
Hush could be an awesome villain for just a Batman standalone, though, because that'd be a, a nice dark. It would. Uh, maybe, maybe like Solomon Grundy. Yeah. Killer Croc. Yeah, Killer Croc goes to Metropolis, yeah. and Batman's like, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see Ben Affleck um, doing that. Yeah. Nah. uh uh Wait Wait his finger. Oh, Lord. But, but yeah, um, I think that, that uh, I think DC should take a cue from, from Marvel. And, I mean, I think they're trying to with the Batman and Superman by, by adding, like, hey, here's Wonder Woman, here's The Flash. Um, and then Because Avengers worked out so well. Avengers worked out well, and now there's all, all kinds of stuff coming up that's going to be awesome. The made for Netflix things that they're doing. The made for Netflix thing. That's such a cool idea. It um, is. It's it, going to be Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage, right? And Luke Cage, yeah. I think it's going to start with Daredevil, and then they're going to do a one-by-one -one series, and it's all going to build up to a Defenders miniseries. Which is kind of weird, because none of them were in the Defenders. <laughs> so I don't know why they're going to call it that. They should, they should just call it Heroes for Hire. It makes yeah. sense. Um, but I mean, Defenders was Submariner, the Hulk, Silver Surfer. <laughs> right, but... I agree, yeah. I think it's still cool because they're going to introduce and these and yeah. Yeah. They're going to introduce these character these like lesser known characters or characters who they've tried to make movies for and haven't worked like they've been trying to make a Luke Cage movie for a long time and it didn't work. I really hope that they still get the rock yeah. to do Luke Cage. That'd I can't cool. see anyone else being Luke Cage with the rock. That would be cool. And then obviously Daredevil just recently got back to Marvel. Right, so we know how the Daredevil movie yeah. went. And and uh, granted back at Marvel it could be better, but I think that it's a really neat way to kind of build it up and get them back out there, and then maybe there could be a movie if they're probably, if the yeah. series is popular. Have they talked about who's going to be their devil? Do you know? No, I haven't seen any cast rumors, but they've hired people to write because uh, Drew Goddard, who directed uh, Cabin in the Woods, and he had work with Cloverfield and Lost. He had work with Cloverfield and Lost. Uh, he, so he's got a J.J. Abrams so, and a Joss Whedon connection. He's yeah, going to so write the Daredevil series. And then uh, yeah. Melissa Rosenberg is writing Jessica Jones. The one who did Twilight. She did Twilight, but she also did Dexter. She also wrote for Dexter. Yeah. So that's the... Yeah, that uh, could be promising. Yeah. And Jessica Jones isn't even, like, a big deal. No, but but, but I guess if you said she was married to Luke Cage, and so I yeah. guess that could be a neat little thing. So, it, so, be, so maybe that... Like, it'd be cool if the TV shows actually do, like, have crossovers, you know? Yeah. Because, I mean, they all work in around the same area of New York, the whole, like, Hell's Kitchen area. Right. You know, so that'd be cool, like... You know, Iron Fist working with Luke Cage, Luke Cage working with Jessica Jones. Yeah. You know, Daredevil pops up for every now and then. I would like it. I would like to see it take place in the '70s. To be honest, I think that that'd be really neat. It'd be really <laughs> that'd neat be cool. See, it'd be really neat to see them in the seven, like in that '70s uh, era as well. As well as the fact that if you did it in the '70s, then you wouldn't necessarily have to connect it to the current Marvel universe. You could do hints of it, like Howard Stark could be around. Yeah. You know, or that'd the, be cool. You know, something like that. I mean, um, like currently, like. I, like, all of them are Avengers members, you know, and, like, the current comic book story arcs, but, you know, we, they don't have to do that. They don't, yeah, they don't have to be thrown in there. Uh, I mean, unless, they're wanna, unless they want to build up for the post-Avengers 3, you know. Yeah, because, um, I mean, re really, like you said, you know, they're all, like, minor Marvel characters. Yeah. You know, they're not ones that people think of Marvel, like, oh, Luke Cage is my favorite. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, I think of Daredevil, because I actually really like Daredevil. Oh, I'm a, I'm a huge Daredevil um, fan. Like, uh, Joe Carnahan had a really neat, I remember he had a really neat pitch. I think his his take on Daredevil would have taken place in the 70s, but... If I, like, honestly, I would love to see the Daredevil story arc where he actually, like, goes evil. And, yeah. like, becomes, like, he gets a black suit, and he's all running Hell's Kitchen and everything. That would be sick. Like, they could end up yeah. lining up Daredevil to be the villain and, like, the Defenders. That could be really neat. That could be really neat. I definitely... And the made-for-Netflix movie. Yeah, I think that would be... See, I think it'd be sweet. I think... But I think Marvel has a good thing going, and they've yeah. also got, uh... The Ant-Man has had some casting rumors and stuff. Uh, I've been trying to think of who I would like to see play these characters over the last couple days. And oh, like, yeah, for, like, the, the Daredevil. And... Yeah, the only one I can think of so far is The Rock being Luke Cage. I can't, like, put... I just can't pick anyone for any of the other parts yet. Right, so yeah, besides Luke Cage, uh, would be I, The Rock. I'm not sure who I'd want to play any of the others yet. There's a, uh, I don't know, because I, I just don't know enough about Jessica Jones. I honestly didn't even know who she was. Um, yeah. To be honest, and I don't, uh, I know, she, I know of Iron Fist. And I know what his costume looks like, but I don't know what he looks like. Iron in Fist. Costume. Iron Fist is actually kind of cool. Like he has the powers of Iron Fist. You mm -hmm. know, as you know, which makes him like one of the like best martial artists in the world. Oh, like okay. he has these like dragon punches okay. and kicks and stuff. And he taught Luke Cage a lot about how he knows, like, him and Luke Cage became heroes for hire, you know, doing freelance work on the streets, okay. fighting crime. And they'd get paid for it. Well, that's cool. And so that's, like, Luke, and, like, Luke Cage and Iron Fist have worked together a lot. Yeah. Because Luke Cage has bulletproof skin, you know, indestructible skin, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Which Jessica Jones has that as well. But she also has, like, the super, she has super strength and she has flight and stuff. Mm -hmm. And her and Luke Cage have a kid together. 
So do you do you have do you know of somebody who could play Iron Fist or Jessica Jones off the top of your head if you had to think of either to choose one now? I couldn't for Jessica Jones. Like I think it'd be kind of cool if they actually if they made Iron Fist, you know, like Asian or something, mm -hmm. and they could take that like that tiger dude from the new Keanu Reeves movie. Yeah. He'd be pretty cool. I mean, I don't know how his acting is yet because I haven't seen Man, Man of, of Tai Chi. Man of Tai yeah. Chi, but That's you know, true. he definitely has like kind of a look for it, and he's obviously good at martial arts and stuff. Yeah. I, you know who I've always loved the idea of playing Daredevil, and I feel like he had the offer back for the old movie and didn't do it as Guy Pierce. Um, which the problem, the, obviously the problem with that is, A, it's a Netflix series, I don't know if Guy Pierce would do that, B, he's already, he was already in Iron Man 3, yeah. and, he's, and he's, he's aged, he's a lot older. But besides that, I can't really think of anybody, I mean, uh, pre-Spider-Man, James Joseph Franco. Joseph gordon it. Joseph gordon it should just do everything. <laughs> I think we said that last week. We did. Last time. Uh, I mean, like, a, a pre-Spider-Man, uh, James Franco could have been a cool Daredevil. Dave or, Franco, maybe. Dave Franco could be a Daredevil. Uh, or, be kind uh, of a young Daredevil, yeah. though. Yeah, or Casey Affleck. Casey Affleck could do it. That'd be kind of funny. That'd be kind of funny, yeah. <laughs> Seeing as how Ben Affleck played him before, and, yeah, that would be hilarious. <laughs> uh, uh, you, but you have to get that right age to where they'd be already respectable as a lawyer. Yeah, and that's that's true. Like that. the, there's, like, a sweet spot in the age. Ben Affleck had that. Um, back in the day. Back in the you day. You have to get a good Foggy Nelson. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who'd be a good Daredevil. That's uh... uh. Yeah, I'm excited for who they cast. Maybe it'll be like some new person for all it the might. parts. It uh, might. It could be based based on. I mean, unless they do end up having bigger plans for it, I I'm, I, mean, I wouldn't but be surprised. A lot, but a lot of like made for Netflix series have got some like pretty decent actors so that's far. That's true. You know, House well, of Kevin, Spacey, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, that's a good point. That's uh, a good point. Hemlock Drive got Fomke. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix. You know. Uh, she, she's not a huge name, but you know. No, but she's, she's big the Phoenix. enough. Yeah, she's big enough. But yeah, I I don't know who it would be. Like, it's a uh, take some thought. What you think about that? Yeah, we'll come back to you with that next time. Yeah, um, Ant Man is another uh, hot thing going hot on. Hot thing going on. Um, there was original rumors of Joseph Gordon Levitt and Paul Rudd being up for it. Yeah, but now it's down. Joseph Gordon Levitt's been debunked. Yeah, it's and... he he kind of debunked it, but I mean it's Marvel. They're secretive. But now Paul Rudd has been and Rashida Jones have been yeah. two. So we'll linked. have Ant Man and Wasp there. Yeah, or at least they, I think I think they said that she wouldn't be Wasp yet. She would just be Janet, and then would potentially become Wasp later. But okay. That's that's cool. That's though. still I'm cool. Um, Where Paul Rudd being Ant Man, I think, is the cool one of the coolest things I've ever heard. But it makes you wonder, like, is it going for the serious route, the or well, just comical? The fact because I mean, Ant Man has both variations depending on if it's going to be. Hank Pym or Scott Lang. Yeah, that's true. Which there was a there was talk that it could be both. It could be both in there. Like maybe Hank Pym was the Ant Man before, uh, like in the '60s. Like Edgar Wright was quoted like, "Oh, it'd be neat if like he was in the '60s or something." So it could be a possibility that Hank Pym uh, has has already been Ant Man and then he's passing it over to Scott Lang in the movie. Or maybe Scott Lang is a figure in the movie. Who's and, trying to take the Ant Man? Yeah, or you know, like they can build it up for Scott Lang to later become Ant-Man kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like so a passing which, of the torch. Yeah, which means it, it is possible that it could be Paul Rudd and Joseph gordon um, That'd be sweet. be cool. But Paul Rudd is a superhero. I mean, imagine Paul Rudd, <laughs> a little more muscular, standing next to the Incredible Hulk. Or Thor. Or standing how, on the Incredible Hulk. Or standing Thor. on the Incredible Hulk is this big. <laughs> Think about Just how Paul awesome Rudd up there. I mean, like... Just Paul Rudd with his <laughs> smile, his typical Paul Rudd smile, saying something sarcastic <laughs> and... But but you were you were talking about the comedic tone. I have a feeling. I mean, but all Marvel movies have that comedic tone to them. That's true. It's kind of perfect, and it's Edgar Wright directing it, who has who's great with comedy, as we know, and uh, Paul Rudd, obviously, if that's who they're leaning towards. But we haven't seen Edgar um, Wright do anything along the serious road that's either. That's true. That's a good point. Um, uh, well, he's proven that he can do action really well. I mean, Scott Pilgrim had a lot of good fight scenes, and, and even The World's End has a good has a great little fight scene. Well, and all of them do, like you know. That's yeah. Char Charlotte and Hot Fuzz both had like little fight scenes thrown in there. That's true. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and um, there's gonna but, be a scene where Ant Man's trying to jump over a fence. The, I really hope <laughs> they do that. But Ant, Ant Man is such a sillier, s sillier superhero. Like with yeah, his he abilities is. and stuff. He, um, he shrinks. That it might. I think it'd be best to make it funnier. It just kind of makes sense. And that could add a little bit more humor to like Avengers Two if they put Ant Man in it. Hopefully yeah. they do. Exactly. Well. well and they already said Ant Man's not making Ultron, so maybe he won't be in Avengers two, and we'll have to wait till three. Yeah, I think it'd be neat if he popped up in Avengers two, just because 
Ant Man's gonna come out. The, like a little that, cameo or something. Yeah, he, the movie itself is gonna be released just a few months after Avengers Two. It's not like it's a following year or anything. It's a couple of months later. Yeah. I don't see why they couldn't have even just a little cameo just to be like, oh hey, here's Hank Pym or Scott Lang or however they're doing it. Yeah, like introduce him as like a scientist somewhere yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they. Maybe I mean I know that they like you said that they said he's not gonna be the one involved in Ultron. That's kind of sad because it'd be I think it'd be an easy and neat. Way to, to bring him in to incorporate him, so maybe they could have him involved in some capacity. Maybe Tony Stark worked with Hank Pym or knows Hank Pym in some way. Yeah, something like that. But I think it'd be cool if it was the end of Iron Man. Yeah, it'd be an epic beginning in Avengers two, and then it could just lead on because I mean, Robert Downey has been around for a while. And, and they're creating their own story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, There's his, his contract ran around. out. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, uh, we don't know in what capacity he's gonna be back. For the for Avengers two or three or whatever the you know whatever but uh, they've got so many characters of both I mean obviously they got Ant Man and the next one's gonna have Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch um, the they're Guardians not allowed to call them mutants right not allowed to call them mutants and they're not allowed to mention Magneto yeah and then as and then as far as X Men Days of Future's Past they're not allowed to mention the Avengers the Avengers which I doubt they would anyway but I think it's gonna be awesome to have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in there. Yeah, and especially who they got as the cast. That's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, Aaron Johnson and um, Elizabeth Olsen. Who you may know kick-ass, who is pretty kick-ass, and uh, Elizabeth Olsen, who's awesome, like a good Olsen sister. <laughs> yeah. Um, who'd have thought that the Olsen twins that would one, have a sister? Like, that's talented. That's talented, but um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited for the, for the for Joss Whedon's interpretation of Quicksilver, but I'm, also, I'm actually also excited for Evan Peters as Quicksilver and, and how Brian Singer's going to use him. Yeah. Um, I think he mentioned he only, he there was like one sequence. That I didn't wanted. see him in the trailer. No, uh, he was at Comic-Con. He was on the Comic-Con panel. Oh, the trailer had some like little mutants in yeah, it. Bishop, yeah, Bishop. Bishop was there. Bishop was there. Blink was there. Blink was there. War, was it Warpath? Yeah, I don't Warpath. Really know very much, but, but, but he's there and... You know, they brought Kitty Pride back, and Iceman back, and Rogue is back, and, uh... Iceman has a bitch and beard going on. Iceman has a... Iceman has a bitch and beard. X-Men Days of the Future's Past looks pretty epic, and I'm If you haven't seen really the trailer excited. for it, look it up right now. Yeah. Like, I seriously get chills every time I watch it. There's the scene at the end when it has both Xavier's talking ah, to each other. Ah, epic. We're on just camera sound now. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, that is such an epic trailer for having so little, because... He said there's no special effects that have been done, like very little. So yeah, there's no all, action in the trailer. It's all very character driven. But you get a sweet view of Peter Dinklage and how he's yeah. looking at his Trask. Yeah, you do. And you get... I wish you got to see a Sentinel. I know, but... That I just, that's what sense. I'm most excited to see is the Sentinel. But finally. if they haven't gotten the effects done, then there's not going to be a Sentinel. And uh, Logan with his gray hair and... Uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be sweet. I'm super excited at how oh. that pick is looking. But... Yeah... Because, I mean, X3 was so bad. X-Men 3 was not very good. The new Wolverine was better. They, it I enjoyed a lot. it. Uh, it improved a lot on uh, the first the first Wolverine movie. Because yeah, the first sucked. Wolverine movie was bad. Um, uh, yeah, they, it was fine. Like, X-Men had its fall and they, 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 they fixed slowly it. Was going on. And this looks like it's going to be like Avengers scope epic. But yeah. in a different way. You know, in a different way, of course. Um, Brian Singer's back for it, which is awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's really cool. The fact that there's the fact they've got everybody. If it does, if it if it there's a time travel element, as we know, uh, Shadow Cat helps Xavier. They send uh, uh, Logan's mind or whatever back, back to his past to body because they're, they're trying to stop the the Sentinels or you know Trask and what's going to happen to mutants in the future or whatever. And uh, there's a time travel element, which means they could possibly completely erase what happened in X-Men 3, which would be pretty awesome. Yeah, we can have um, Cyclops come back. Have Cy if it doesn't, if Cyclops doesn't pop up at the end of this movie, I'm going to be really pissed. I am too. Like, I, it just has to happen now. I expect Logan to come back to, to the present or whatever and, you know, be looking around at things being different and then, oh, there's Cyclops. He makes some snide comment to, to Logan, you know, calls him an asshole or just something, something like that. Like, it has to happen. Yeah. And Phoenix could be around, or Jean Grey could be around. Nightcrawler. Okay. You know, maybe they'll look, because, I, oh, Brian Singer said this takes place, or the whenever the the point in the 70s that Logan goes back to takes place before he gets his adamantium. Oh. So they could also possibly erase stuff that they did in, in, Wolverine. in the Wolverine movie. Spoilers again. Spoilers again. If maybe, you haven't maybe, seen it. They could oh. fix Deadpool, which would make sense for the Deadpool movie, which I hope, hope, hope comes to fruition. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and... 
It'd be pretty cool to see Emma Frost again. It'd be cool to see Emma Frost again. She was hot. January Jones. Is, is, she's not the best actress, but she's no. hot. Um, yeah, I guess we could end with one more quick Marvel topic, and that's the Captain America trailer that got released a few weeks ago. <laughs> if you haven't seen this one as well, go watch it right go now. Watch that right it also now. gives me chills. Give me chills. Fucking Winter Soldier. In, Pardon my language. End of, end of the trailer, he catches it. He catches it, and that's an epic moment. And, and then the five minute preview for the 3D Thor showings that they had. You know, he's not, they don't, they, I think they barely had Bucky in the, in the five minute thing until the end. And there's just a moment where there's figures walking up and he picks up the shield off the ground and walks it on his arm. And then they, you know, tilt up to reveal that it's Bucky. And it's like, Dude, so one thing I'm hoping that they lead for is the death of Captain America. Because that was such a sweet comic moment. Yeah. They might be. Uh, for Captain America 3. like Winter Soldier's there and Captain America gets shot. Yeah. And Bucky ends up coming, coming in as the new Captain America. I have a feeling they won't do that, or maybe they'll do a some sort of. Yeah, but then Steve Rogers is actually it. dead. Like he, he gets brought back to life, so there's two yeah. Captain Americas. Yeah, exactly. And then Bucky dies, and Steve Rogers is like, "I should be Captain America again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited for Falcon. I am too. There's a cool moment in the trailer where he leaps off the thing, and then, and then his wings come out. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, man, Anthony Mackie's awesome. Next year's gonna be sweet. X-Men and Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> which I'm I'm getting more and more stoked for. I am too. Like it wasn't there, and now it's rising. Yeah, you know, every year when there's these superhero movies, there's always like one that stands out as being that I'm the most excited for. Like uh, this year was Man of Steel, um, among all of them. But uh, and this but year I for think, me, mine was Iron Man three. That's true. Iron Man three, I still liked it. Besides, you know, a few things, but like. Next year, though, I can't decide between the three that's coming out next year. I'm so I'm, excited. I'm going to say I'm most excited for is Days of Futures Past. Yeah, I think I think about Captain Hatch America is going to be my least, but I'm still pretty fucking excited. Yeah, for it's, it. it's, it's a, there's a, there's levels like there you know it's yeah because it's, Guardians, I'm really excited for Guardians because it's a whole new thing and it's going to be so different. That's going to be so good and it's going to start. It's going to add a whole new, whole new aspect to Marvel gonna, movies. Yeah, it's going to bring a whole new thing to the yeah. And it's James Gunn. Like we I'm excited have, to see James Gunn. We already Gunn have the nine. Movie. We have the nine realms. Now we're getting space. Yeah, Chris Pratt <laughs> being awesome, and Zoe Saldana being hot in a different color again. Yep, she she likes being different colors. She likes being different colors. Yeah, so that's I guess that's all we have for that's you today. All, we don't um, have a nerd rant. We don't have a nerd rant, but because I, I had one, but it just uh, too much time had passed and. It didn't, and but that's okay. We'll have comic one. book movies. Comic book movies. DC, um, you gotta step your game up. Yes, I think next week we could talk about um, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man and the concerns we have. They should be releasing a trailer soon before the Hobbit. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the trailer to come out before I can. Yeah. Before I can nerd rant about that's true. Spider-Man. Well, it's not necessarily a nerd rant, but I just have some no, concerns. I can, I can go on a nerd rant right now about. Yeah, it. fair enough. And I uh, maybe some of our favorite scenes in movies, or favorite villains, or favorite just favorite scenes. Yeah. So tune in for our next one. Yeah. We have some new music videos coming your way from Piper Plows. Piper Plows, Piper Plows, staying busy. Check us out on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. <laughs>